back 2.19 is, is worth looking at first. Because not only are you dead to sin, you're also dead to the law. Look at verse 19. For through the law I died, I died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. And so Paul had been crucified with Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Colossians 2, 20 says, If you have died with Christ, and the truth is we have died with Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 3, 1. If you, then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Do you see how Paul is understanding this truth that we died with Christ we were raised with Christ to newness of life to affect how you live life here. And it is, it is a very, this positional truth becomes very important in your Christian experience. Being dead to sin causes you to no longer live in it. And the way you became dead to sin was through identification through this positional truth of God unifying you with Christ in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, and even in his ascension and his, and, and, and his being seated at the right hand of God. And that's how God sees you. Do you see yourself that way? Because whether you see yourself or that way or not, it's true of you. But if you, if you begin to see yourself in light of this, it will affect you in the way you live here. And if you don't, if you think this is just cool doctrine, and yeah, that's good doctrine, you know, or whatever, and it has no real significance to you, you're going to live out life frustrated through human effort. You're going to try to deal with sin in all kinds of ways. And it might be through more scripture memorization. It might be get, going to bed earlier, getting up earlier, more devotional time, uh, more, um, you know, put blinders on your eyes so you don't look at the wrong thing. Uh, you're going you're gonna to trust in pop-up blockers. You're going to trust in all kinds of things that are supposed to bring you victory in the Christian life, which will, are all destined to perish with the using. In fact, go to Colossians, since we're there already, Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. If you have died with Christ, and you have, to the elementary principles of the world, what are they? What are the elementary principles of the world? Don't do this, don't do that, and quit doing the other thing. Just stop it. That's the elementary principles of the world. Taste not, touch not, handle not. Quit. Just say no. George Bushism, you know? That's, that's the elementary principles of the world. And, and you know, by George Bush, the senior starting that program, the Just Say No to Drugs program. Remember that when that started back in the 80s, I think it was? That stopped drugs in America, didn't it? We don't have a drug problem in America anymore because people just said no. I remember watching TV, youth that would get up, and I'm, they'd have the Just Say No thing on there, but I know they had a reefer in their pocket. I mean, they, they were just, but they were just saying no, you know? They're, it works, doesn't it? Doesn't the elementary, see, you see, that's how the world stops people from doing stuff. That's the elementary stuff. That's what you learn in kindergarten. That's not the Christian life, and yet almost every book you read in Christianity today is a just say no book. Almost every one of them. And, it, and they redress it, and they come out, now it's the Christian disciplines. Man, you just need to get deeper into Christian disciplines. You go, we need to go back to Puritanism. That really worked, didn't it? Back in the 1800s, 1600s, 1700s, that was really good. It really brought forth a lot of, you know, burning witches at the stake and all kinds of good stuff that came out of that. And we need to go back to that. That is not the answer. 
That is first class Galatian legalism and that will not get you to your goal. In fact, look what he says there. Why as if living in the world, and we are, aren't we? But we're not. Do you submit yourself to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, quit doing this, quit doing that, stop that? Which are all which all refer to things destined to perish with the using. Now what in the world does that phrase mean? I'll tell you what it means. It works for about two weeks. That's what it means. It's a New Year's resolution. Destined to perish with the using. That's what happens with every diet. That's why those magazines, you know, those women's world magazines, they, they got a new diet every stinking week. And it's the banana diet. Or it's the, you know, it's the whatever diet. And, it, and it's guaranteed to knock off 20 pounds off of you. And how long do those diets last? They're destined to perish with the using. They last about two weeks. The, the, you, you, you start doing it, and it quits working for you. So you throw it away and try a different diet. Like my brother told me. He said, I'm not getting enough food on this diet, so I've decided to go on two at once. <laughs> in, a, in accordance with the commandments and teachings of men. Look at verse 23. These are matters which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom. And don't they look right? And how? In self-made religion, in self-abasement, in severe treatment of the body. And I love this last part. And they work. Is that what your Bible says? And are of no value against fleshly indulgence. It will not stop you from sinning. So what, do you, what stops you? Verse 1 of chapter 3. If you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. See, understanding who you are now, this positional truth, and that's why I often call it identification truth rather than positional truth. Because this is positioned beside me but but this is identified with me you see I, I think it's we should change it probably call it identification truth but for doctrinal purposes we, we call it positional truth but it is it is the fact that God has identified us with Jesus Christ that's the way he sees us are we going to quit looking at ourselves through Adam and start looking at ourselves through Christ because that's who we are now. We are, we belong to Jesus Christ. We are no longer in Adam. That's why he took half of chapter 5 to show us the difference between the two men in order to get us on this trail of starting to see who we really are now because when you understand that you are accepted in Jesus Christ, that that's how God sees you, it will affect the way you live here. And it will. And part of that is that on the day of your salvation, you are identified with Christ, but not just straight to heaven. He took you back to the cross, and you died with Christ. You were buried with him. You were raised to newness of life. That's how God sees you. Christ's death is now your death, and his resurrection is now your resurrection.